invite you to join us and perhaps with the greatest song ever written about our, our home to the father of American folk music, Pete Seeger. Lead us, Pete. This land is your land. This land is All right, welcome back, folks. In our last video, we saw that some liberal advocates for the rights of indigenous communities think that returning taken property to these communities won't necessarily help all the members. Why? Because common law fee simple title had already played a role in the breakdown of those communities, one, because Customary titles had often been used to promote internal hierarchy and inequality, and especially to exclude women, too. And some also say that returning sovereignty to indigenous groups would do no more than that to achieve justice, since especially women are treated quite badly within the groups. And that's number three. Or in other words, women experience what Kimlicka calls internal restrictions, and semi-sovereign status is really the only thing that's allowed the U.S. government to intervene on at least some issues of justice and equality. Now in this video, we're going to take a look at a different way of understanding things. That's Glenn Coulthard's resurgent politics of recognition. Coulthard doesn't want to embrace Charles Taylor's politics of recognition fully, as we're going to see in a second, but he thinks that the liberal advocates that I just spoke about have misrecognized indigenous communities. There are more building blocks of justice within indigenous understandings of their land, their religion, their values, even their understanding of gender, than any of these liberals have been able to recognize within them. Indeed, their political approach to indigenous communities almost forces them to misrecognize these aspects of indigenous culture. So he wants a more thorough recognition, a better one, what he labels a resurgent politics of recognition. In a sense, he says that the politics of recognition has, at least in Canada, which is Taylor's home country, as well as Kimlicka's, he says it's been co-opted by politicians who just wanted to prolong colonial domination. He said they talk about reconciling with and accommodating indigenous communities, but what they really mean is finding ways to satisfy some small number of indigenous nationhood claims while reasserting the overall dominance of Canada as a whole. If you think about it, why else would you bring up internal illiberalism within a culture and then assert a need for a paternal overseer, keeping indigenous communities only semi-sovereign? As he says on page 17, he thinks that Taylor himself, whatever his goals might have been, had actually reinforced this same colonialist, racist, patriarchal view of indigenous cultures. So he returns instead to Taylor's original source, that's France Fanon, and he looks there for a more sort of demanding call for recognition. He says that Fanon teaches him that the colonialist will not be able to recognize the real culture of the dominated or the colonized within the colonial structure itself. The colonial structure is the very thing that had created the misrecognition of the colonized to begin with. Maybe in concept, the fusion of horizons is possible, but when it gets used in what he calls delegated exchanges in the real world, that is, people actually sitting down to negotiate things like treaties, there's still a backdrop of cultural dominance and the resulting disagreements are almost designed to backfire. So that brings us to our hashtag puzzle in Coulthard's text. He says this against Taylor on page 17. Some proponents of contemporary liberal recognition politics can subtly reproduce non-mutual and unfree relations rather than free and mutual ones. And then he continues, when delegated exchanges of recognition occur in real world contexts of domination, the terms of accommodation usually end up being determined by and in the interests of the hegemonic partner in the relationship. So we're gonna take a look in this lecture at two mistakes that he thinks the liberal paradigm makes, even and especially Taylor's politics of recognition in order to loop back around to this same quote and explain it. The first mistake, 
Liberals accustomed to colonial power misrecognize the meaning of the asset land that they want to see justly distributed. And second, more importantly for Coulthard, this misrecognition actually masks the liberals' actual intention for that asset, which is, he says, always has been to make it productive at the expense of the indigenous. They are so used to seeing the indigenous as dominated people. And as Fanon says, the indigenous have internalized that image of their own domination that even when liberals try to recognize the true meaning of land and culture to the indigenous, they'll never really be able to enter into a true dialogue. They'll instead impose their view that the indigenous don't want this land for anything as important as their oil and gas rights, for instance, but just for hunting and fishing or a pastoral life. That the liberal can accommodate so long as it doesn't block what the liberal wants. Let's unpack both those arguments in the text. Coldhart says that what's on offer in Taylor's liberal pluralistic politics of recognition is at least two of the things that I talked about in the last video the satisfaction of claims for land rights, and offers of some limited sovereignty. Also on offer, he says, is money for economic development plans. So in a sort of Rawlsian twist on the distributive model, the first set of offers are about the supposed liberal rights, the second about material goods, and that the liberal takes to be exhaustive of justice. What's wrong with this distributive model? Well, he says on page 19 that if you see justice as being literally defined by rights and material interests, then you're always going to think that culture or identity concerns displace or undercut justice, like the hashtag issues that we looked at last time. Liberals like Song and Levy worry only about whether common law, customary law, or sovereignty serve the purpose of rights and serve the purpose of equitable distributions of land. The liberal will always sort of find identity politics to be a threat. But Coulthart says there on page 19 that indigenous claims are already about land, already about political power, already about economic interests. It's just that their identity, their culture is tied up in those things. It's inextricable from the meaning of them. The liberal just can't recognize what those things mean to First Nations people. He says that these assets just look like capital to the liberal, but to the First Nations people, as they're called in Canada, they provide the material and spiritual sustenance of Indigenous societies. In some sense, Anglo-Canadians always understood this. He suggests in the 20th century, they actually sought to expropriate the land, but not only that, to change the First Nations people as well. He calls this on page six, their policy of exclusion, assimilation, pairing. You can have your culture if you remain totally separate, excluded, they seem to be saying, but we're gonna aggressively try to assimilate your younger generation because we can see that it's your cultural values, your way of life itself that get in the way of our land claims. So Canada, for instance, forcibly removed First Nations children from their families to re-educate them in boarding schools meant to teach them the majority language and the majority culture. And they ostensibly did that because these children would get more rights and more material opportunities, the two sides of liberal justice. They said those things were really available to them only if they were educated in the right way, integrated with the dominant majority culture. The land was taken, yes, but the culture was also disruptive. Coulthard is suggesting the liberals already saw that. They saw that they had to do that. And now he is saying that the land should be given back, but it has to be given back in the exact way that it traditionally supported the culture. The liberals from our last lecture say, give it back in the way that best supports the liberal goals of justice for individual members of the Native American communities. Coldheart responds, give it back, but it won't be used to produce your justice, instead, indigenous justice. On page 12, he says that these lands deeply inform and sustain indigenous modes of thought and behavior that harbor profound insights into the maintenance of relationships within and between human beings and the natural world, built on principles of reciprocity, non-exploitation, and respectful coexistence. On page 13, he calls this grounded normativity. Land and everyday experiential practices, he says, 
inform and structure our ethical engagements with the world and our relationships with human and non-human others over time. So that's the first part of his argument, that liberals misrecognize the meaning of the very asset that they want to distribute fairly. Now let's get into the deeper critique, that these people engaged in this supposedly liberal fairness and justice are simply putting a mask upon land grabs. Coulthart makes an argument that's simultaneously about misrecognition and about colonial greed. He turns to Fanon for the theory of recognition, and he takes really a part of and only a part of Marx's theory to explain that sort of land grab. What does he take from Marx? Well, he says that Marx actually helped him to see that ownership is really the only right at the basis of liberalism and that it really motivates all uses of liberal power. And Marx helped him to see that the state always supports ownership, even the softer, cuddlier, friendlier state of today that offers recognition will offer it only if you negotiate over your land. What he doesn't take from Marx is Marx's own view of indigenous people. Marx thought they were primitive society. He saw that their lands were being taken, expropriated in America and Canada to service capitalism in Europe, he thought. But he didn't think that was the real show of capitalism. Exploitation, in Marx's language, was primarily what happened to wage laborers. At their earlier stages of development, Indian peoples just weren't being dominated that much yet. So you can look at pages 10 to 11 for Coulthard's story about Marx's opinions on this. But Coulthard responds that what was happening to First Nations and Native American peoples definitely was exploitation. You just need the right theory in order to see how bad it really was. And so he turns to Fanon for that. Land was being stolen, yes, but the perpetual acceptance of this was actually deepened and made invisible, as it were, by forcing indigenous peoples to accept that they were inferior, that they were made for this type of exploitation. Then a vicious cycle would kick in. Exploitation by expropriation of land, acceptance of that as the fate of the indigenous, and then more exploitation. As Coulthard says on page 16, colonial thinking serves to commit the colonized to the types of practices and subject positions that are required for their continued domination. So now we can definitely get back to our hashtag puzzle. Remember, he says this against Taylor on page 17. Some proponents of contemporary liberal recognition politics can subtly reproduce non-mutual and unfree relations rather than free and mutual ones. And then he continues, when delegated exchanges of recognition occur in real world contexts of domination, the terms of accommodation usually end up being determined by and in the interests of the hegemonic partner in the relationship. So you see, he says that Fanon helps him explain this, and he pays homage to Black Skin, White Masks, Fanon's book that we're also gonna read. Fanon wants to demonstrate in that book how the colonized internalize an image of themselves as dominated. And he uses his experience as a psychiatrist to say that domination produces a psycho-affective commitment to an image of oneself as an inferior. And Coulthard adds to that that if one's image of oneself is what he calls structurally circumscribed, then even liberal recognition just won't help you escape the vicious cycle. You'd sit down at the negotiating table already thinking that your claims to land are merely for hunting and fishing, and that there's a reason that you have to be careful not to stand in the way of those oil and gas rights. Or you begin thinking that you have some reason to apologize for the gendered the religious or the cultural practices in your own community and to apologize for how they violate liberal justice. That's how your liberal negotiating partner sees you. And now that's how you see yourself. Then any deal that's struck doesn't recognize you. It recognizes this false image of you. And then it runs roughshod over you like you've been taught to deserve. There is in this no real fusion of horizons this is like sort of a pantomime allowing the liberal to say, we have recognized the indigenous for who they truly are, but they're really only seeing the indigenous as backwards, simple people, because they're people who need some hunting and fishing rights on land 
but they shouldn't be able to stand in the way of liberal progress, in the way of Canada, in the way of United States, in the way of liberal justice, primarily ownership. An agreement like that, Coldheart says in the quote, is non-mutual and unfree. As he says, when delegated exchanges of recognition occur in real world contexts of domination, the terms of accommodation usually end up being determined by and in the interests of the hegemonic partner in the relationship. Okay, so now at the end of this video, you see how we've switched things around a little bit for the second half of our class. We have hashtag issues. We have some divisions and some problems out there to deal with in the policy world. And now we're actually seeing how two different theoretical lenses see it. The liberals in the first video see it in one way, cold heart in this video sees it in another way. And what we want to discuss in class is how we should view these issues. I look forward to talking with you about it and I'll see you then.